this is a fairly straightforward constitutional law hypothetical. There are not a lot of surprises in it, but I'd like to use it to show you how little you really need in your final outline. Constitutional law is such a huge subject, but a bar hypothetical is going to zero in on one or two areas. What do we have here? Well, I see two calls. One asks about a total taking, and the second asks about a partial taking. So we're in the area of eminent domain. And I look above to see what the question is. It's, did the trial court correctly rule that county's denial of Paula's development application did not constitute, then one is a total taking and two is a partial taking? We're talking about a development application. So this sounds regulatory rather than a physical confiscation of property. If we're talking about a regulatory taking and whether the court correctly ruled that it was not any kind of regulatory taking, neither total nor partial, then all the law I really need in my mind comes from a very narrow area. Eminent domain. This is an example of how little we need to have in our final outline. We call these schemas because of the way they flow from left to right. But look at this. Eminent domain only one of the many topics in con law. You need a general rule about what the Constitution says about takings, and then you need an analysis approach. Is it a taking? If it's a government confiscation, yes, but if it's a land use regulation, then either a denial of all economic value or just decreased economic value. And if it's just decreased economic value, then we analyze three factors. The social goals, the diminution in value, and the owner's reasonable expectations. But to do this analysis, we need to do all three elements for a taking. Is it a taking? Is it for public use? And is there just compensation? So all of that's going to go into our analysis in this hypothetical. But look at how little law I needed to have in my mind. With that in mind, I go to the hypothetical and I start reading it, keeping in mind what's going to be legally relevant facts for every part of that analysis. What I find here is that Paula has owned and farmed a parcel consisting of 100 acres for many years. So her economic use so far has been farming. All right. Last year, in compliance with county regulations, she expended a substantial amount of money in determining the economic feasibility of developing 10 acres of the parcel that border the shore of a small lake. She recently submitted a development application to county seeking to construct 30 homes on those 10 acres. County then determined that the 10 acres constitute protected wetlands that under a state law enacted recently had to be left undeveloped to protect certain endangered species. On that basis, county denied the development application. So far I've got facts that go to social goals and to the owner's expectation, but I don't have anything about diminution in value yet. The denial of the development application is the subject of the call, but let's see what else we've got going forward. Paula brought an action claiming that county's denial of the development application constituted a regulatory taking in violation of the U.S. Constitution. It was stipulated that the 10 acres are worth 
four million dollars if development is permitted and two hundred thousand if it's not there are the facts that go to diminution in value then we get the trial court ruled that county's denial of Paula's development application did not constitute either one a total or two a partial taking so we're to analyze whether the court was correct that, that this was neither a total taking nor a partial taking. So with that analysis structure in mind, the first thing I'm going to do is give a rule for taking. Then I'm going to analyze whether this was a confiscation of property, and it was not. So I move to regulatory taking and explain to the grader that that could be a total taking or it could simply be a decreased economic value. A total taking would be denial of all economic value in a land use regulation. All right, but now the problem that sort of sets apart higher scoring answers is that in a takings clause analysis, what do we use as the denominator? Are we talking about 100 acres of land that she owned, or are we talking only about the 10 acres that were the subject of this ruling, of this land use regulation? You can explain that to the grader, that that's where the problem lies in courts analyzing takings. Either way, this does not look like a denial of all economic value because she can still do the farming she always did. On the 100 acres for sure, on the 10 acres, without the development, it's still worth the $200,000 that it was worth before she was denied use. So it's not lost all of its economic value, which means we need to analyze decreased economic value and we need to look for facts that go to those three factors. The first one is social goals. And where do I find facts that go to the social goals in that regulation? Well, I see up in the first paragraph that this is to protect certain endangered species. Those are the social goals, pretty important social goals. Then what's the second? Diminution in value. How much will it decrease the value of the property for her to be denied this permit to develop? Down in the second paragraph, I see that the 10 acres are worth $4 million if development is permitted and 200000 if it is not. Those are the facts that go to diminution in value. What's the third one? The owner's investment backed reasonable expectations. Well, in the first paragraph, we have facts that say that she spent a lot of money on a feasibility study. But that's just kind of, if I get to do it, kind of funding. What we really want here is that she expected to be able to develop and that was her expectation. That was her reasonable investment-backed expectation. Yeah, I do need to analyze the fact that she spent so much money doing the feasibility study that the county required. So I'm sure the court was correct that this was not a total taking. It was not a confiscation or occupation of the land and it was not a denial of all economic value. What do you think about whether this was a partial taking because it decreased economic value? How would you analyze those three factors? What conclusion would you come to? I think your bar examiners would accept a lot 
in terms of a final answer, but you had to use facts well to analyze those three factors. You had to show that you knew those. Look at how straightforward this is in terms of the law. If you've been frustrated and flailing around with constitutional law, then take heart that you can have very little in your final outline and you can memorize it all. And when you get a hypothetical and you realize what area of the law it is, then you can have a roadmap in your mind, something like the schema that I just showed you, that will let you organize an answer in a very clean kind of a way. That's what bar examiners are looking for. And it's entirely doable, even in a huge subject like this. I hope this has helped, particularly for those of you who struggle with constitutional law essays on exams. Again, I would ask you to please share the video. Help us get the word out. Do all the things that YouTube rewards and that help us, like subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell, liking the video, all those things that you know about from YouTube. In other words, let me know it's worthwhile for me to keep doing these.